Hello. Good morning. We will review uh, evidence regarding what is the best protocol for frozen embryo replacements. This was done in human reproduction by Eva Greenwood and Nick McLean's team, which looked at all the possible protocols for frozen embryo replacement. What do we have to achieve from frozen embryo replacement? It is the development of an embryo and endometrium which has to be synchronized. There are four ways of doing it. A natural cycle replacement, a modified natural cycle replacement, medicated hormone replacement therapy, and the use of hormone replacement therapy along with an agonist protocol. When you go on to a natural-based therapy, you achieve an endometrial growth with endogenous hormones. You have to look at a time of ovulation. There is LH monitoring required and you replace three to five days after ovulation. There are challenges. The commonest challenge that you see is that the urine LH lags 21 hours behind blood levels and that's a range probably about 15 to 21 hours after the blood LH level so a urine LH is not exactly accurate when you try and do a frozen embryo replacement based on nature. You have a risk of spontaneous ovulation and in addition the urine LH will give you a false positive up to almost 30 percent and that's one of the reasons why a natural cycle is extremely challenging. The modified natural cycle is when you give the HCG to trigger ovulation. There are advantages here and the advantages are there's no LH monitoring, regular scans are needed and you replace three to five days after ovulation. There's a risk of unexpected ovulation. You then have HRT with down regulation, where you use estrogen and progesterone. You wait till the estrogen gets, the endometrium gets to seven to eight millimeter, and you add progesterone supplementation. This is not trouble free, and pituitary suppression is not guaranteed, and that's the reason why you will see sometimes follicles growing, and a dominant follicle can grow, and in some cases there will be spontaneous ovulation and when you have spontaneous ovulation your endometrial receptivity changes because the endometrium is exposed to progesterone earlier than required. The last protocol is down regulation which is a GRH agonist down regulated protocol where pituitary down regulation is required and it is less physiologic and takes a longer time. So let's have a look at how do they compare? First, they compared natural and the modified natural, which is when you give HCG to trigger ovulation. Approximately 1900 studies were looked at and they found absolutely no difference in clinical pregnancy rates, ongoing pregnancy rates, and live birth rates. They also looked in the subgroup of luteal phase support. Did luteal phase support help when you give it in a natural modified cycle? And it showed there was absolutely no difference in adding luteal phase support and improving the chances of pregnancy, of clinical or, or ongoing pregnancy, either in a natural cycle or a modified natural cycle. They have then looked at natural versus HRT and close to 8,000 studies were looked at and again when you compared replacement of an embryo based on a natural cycle there was absolutely no difference between natural and HRT in terms of clinical pregnancy, ongoing pregnancy and live birth. In natural versus hormone replacement therapy what is the evidence of luteal phase support? 
Again, adding luteal phase support did not improve the chances of pregnancy in a natural cycle compared to an HRT cycle. When you compared a natural cycle, frozen embryo replacement, to a down-regulated cycle of frozen embryo replacement, there was again no difference in clinical pregnancy rate and live birth rates. If again compared HRT versus GnRH down-regulated cycle, and again there was absolutely no difference in pregnancy rates. So in summary, what you could say is irrespective of the protocol you use, there seems to be no difference in pregnancy rates, clinical pregnancy rates and live birth rates. It is important to note that all these studies were retrospective. None of the studies looked at cancellation rates and the cost due to these cancellation rates, which is extremely important for our type of patients who come to us. When you look at natural versus modified natural, you have to remember that there is a cost of, in addition to the burden of doing LH test, doing daily LH tests. As soon as you add HCG to trigger, you have less visits and there is an element of cost involved which takes away your time which is spent in trying to do the blood test. When you look at natural versus HRT, it is better used when you use it in anovulatory patients where you cannot do natural cycle HRT. Do you use patches or oral? There's absolutely no difference in pregnancy rates. And what we also know that if you do start tablets or patches, do not delay them after day four. Give it to them before day four that lowers the chance of cancellation. The second important thing is it is not the duration, the length of estrogen therapy, but the endometrial thickness that is more important. Unlike progesterone, where it is a length of progesterone exposure and endometrial receptivity, it is a length of estrogen therapy which is not important, it is endometrial thickness that is important. Again, if you look at the cancellation rates, compare hormone re replacement therapy to a down-regulated cycle to a natural cycle replacement, the highest cancellation rates were on a natural cycle replacement of 17.5%. HRT cycles also gave us a 12.5% cancellation rate and GnRH agonist cycle gave a cancellation rate of 5%. So in summary, what is the best protocol? Evidence suggests that all protocols have statistically similar success rates. You have to make the choice. And the choice is based on ease, which protocol you find better, which patients find better, the cost and the chances of cancellation. At the end, you have to remember that all these studies are retrospective and retrospective studies come with a bias. If you want to have a much better studies done, much of this will have to be a randomized controlled trial. But at present, evidence suggests that you can try whichever protocol you want, all would give you a similar success rate. Thank you.